I've had enough <laughs> therapy today. Yeah. Can you hear that? Luke, can you hear that? You can't hear that. I mean, I just hear you like this because <laughs> we're close. <laughs> it's okay. Why do we have your phones on? Because it's cool. You're listening to Cultivate, a podcast about the people and technology that are blazing a trail in the cannabis industry. We want to welcome you and thank you for tuning in to Cultivate by Bovida. My name is Drew. And I'm Scott. And my name is Luke, and I'm the, uh, I'm the on-air producer of this show here. So, um, Drew and Scott, can you guys tell us how you guys got involved with the cannabis industry and how you guys started working here at Bovida specifically? So I started a couple years ago just doing customer service administrative stuff back at the office and uh, kind of got thrown into sales, no sales background and uh, no experience in the cannabis world and uh, actually thrown into a, two trade shows with Drew. Our first trip. I remember our first trip together. <sighs> it was great. Yeah, we went to Atlantic City and then we went to Toronto it was fun. But it Scott, was a lot of fun. Scott, you were you've been around Bovida since you've been a little kid, though. Yes. So for the last twenty years, my dad is actually um, one of the co-founders, along with Sean Knutson, um, Robert Essi, and Al Sari. Um, so I've, from a little kid growing up with it, started as Humidipack. It was small, wasn't anything big. Didn't fully understand it until probably high school. It was it was one hundred percent in the cigar industry. Yep. Now it, we're in the cannabis industry. Cigar, now cigar now you work music. for Boveda. Yep. And then uh, in the last five years, the cannabis stuff has just really taken off, um, especially in the last two years. And I think that's kind of when me and Drew really got involved. Charlie, um, our business development director, has been involved for the last four or five years heavily in cannabis, and it's just taken off. And I discovered Bovida because of the cigar industry. Someone put a Bovida pack in my cigars as I was leaving the store. Mm. And I asked the question, what is this? And he said the magic words. He said, you will never recharge your humidor again. And I was blown away because nobody who loves cigars wants to deal with their humidor. So uh, I ran downstairs and met the owners uh, in short order and uh, said, this is a really cool product. And if I can ever help you, let me know. And shortly thereafter, we were on a plane. I got involved with the cannabis industry by representing Bovida at trade shows. I think it was a champs trade show. Yep. Atlantic City. Atlantic City. And then uh, trade show, trade show, trade show, trade show. We did a lot of trade shows together. And uh, what do you do at trade shows? You just like basically we set up a stand and we have Bovida samples and we greet people and we explain the technology and we ask them questions about what they do and figure out ways to help them. Drew's our designated model to at shows. So. Yes. Yeah, I joke. Okay, let's get this out right now. This is not going to go any further. I'm the old guy. He's the young guy. Scott originally introduced me in Atlantic City to everybody in our area as his grandfather. I mean... <laughs> yeah. So I'm not Scott's grandpa. It would be an honor... To, uh, I'd be honored if I were Scott's grandpa, but I'm not. <laughs> um, right now, Drew, can you introduce to us the interview that we're going to pop over to? Melissa Ralston. We discovered Melissa, or she discovered Bovida, in uh, Toronto at the Lyft show. Uh, had the privilege of getting to know her, uh, put together this interview, and uh, she has added tremendously to Bovida and our ability to reach our friends in Canada and around the world. Melissa Ralston. Okay, so I want to start where we started, because we met at Lyft on uh, what would be for the American audience, the Memorial Day weekend. Mm -hmm. we so were, it's our Victoria Day weekend. Yeah, yeah. So we have matching holidays. That's very kind of... Fitting. Very it's, fitting. It's kind, of, it's kind of cute. We have matching holidays. So we met at Lyft. Do you remember what happened? You tell your story, because typically people say, how did you meet? So you tell your story and then I'll correct it. Go ahead. Oh, okay, perfect. Um, so I was just roaming down the aisles at Lyft, going around speaking with a few different people, and we caught one another's attention. And you asked me to c come over and speak with you at the booth, but I was on my way to another meeting. So we coordinated a time to get together at, um, about like an hour and a half from then. 
And then we sat down and talked about all things Bovida. Beautiful. So Bovida, as is depicted on my groovy t-shirt, Bovida is a two-way humidity control company that's in the cannabis business today. Mm-hmm. Um, had you previously experienced Bovida before we met? I have, yeah. I actually uh, was using it with my medicine, and I noticed an incredible enhancement in the terpene profile. Beautiful. So you were positive about Bovida. I was, I tell you what, we sat down and had our chat and we even did a little video that Luke has stored somewhere on his massive hard drive. And um, I was really impressed with you because I asked you what I'm going to ask you right now. uh, uh, How did you get involved in uh, the cannabis world? It happens by complete accident. Um, I actually received a phone call from my cousin back in 2013, and I had just moved downtown um, from living in the GTA in in Mississauga, so it's on the west end of Toronto, if no one knows what that is, Um, and I was pursuing a career in photography. I I was working about two jobs at the time, so I figured may as well go check out this opportunity and see what it is, because, you know, girls got to make money, pay rent. Um, So then I... When I met the CEO, became his executive assistant, and he was in the process of starting up an LP applicant. So an LP is a licensed producer. Those are the only ones who are licensed legally to distribute medical cannabis in Canada as of um, right now. So um, when when I started off doing this, it was very interesting experience. I was working so closely with the CEO, I, I kind of learned... Um, sort of the the way that people were trying to navigate this new industry. Um, and then once we submitted all of our applications, we were like, well, how do we make money now? So we started um, one of the first patient acquisition clinics. And uh, I, that, I had been working in medical clinics since 2009. So it wasn't very new to me at all. And uh, we started assisting patients, helping run them through the legal process so that they could become legally licensed because a lot of them weren't. There was a lot of, and there still is, um, quite a bit of uh, misinformation out there. So once, once we did that, um, we started speaking with a dispensary, and uh, I was switched over to the dispensary. Um, and then I was just working like face-to-face, one-on-one with patients, trying to help them navigate through the legal framework, as well as assisting them and guiding them through their journey back to health or through their illness. So were you engaged right away in the medical aspect for your personal? uh, No. Yeah, no, no, no. So I actually, through through all of that is when I discovered I was a medical patient. So I I used to live in um, Alexandria, Virginia when I was, um, like, when I was younger. And uh, when I moved back to Canada, like, when I was there, I was introduced to cannabis. I knew that it existed because we were educated about it in our, um, we have a D.A.R.E. program in Canada. So drug awareness, resistance, education. So we were, we were educated on it, educated on it, allegedly. Um, <laughs> by, by the experts. Oh yeah. By the experts, like the gateway drug. Sure. Anyways. Um, so once all that, like what, once I came back to Canada, I wasn't scared to try cannabis anymore. Cause when I was living out in the States, um, I'm a military mm-hmm. brat. So my father's Um, He's a veteran now. He retired from the military. And um, I was just like, I don't want to lose my diplomatic status. I don't want to get in trouble. I'm going to be a good girl. Then when we came back to Canada, I was like, you know what? What's the harm in this? And I tried it. And I found out after I was 18 and started to, you know, experience symptoms of PTSD that actually I had been self-medicating all of those years. So through helping others and, and through just being a part of their journey through their illness or back to health, I was able to discover my own journey and in turn help myself while helping them. What I want in the long run is to see you on the speaker circuit with the conventions and doing the, you know, testifying before Congress, testifying before Parliament, doing the things, standing up and being a representative for this side of the world. Because my my personal thing, um, we're not just going to talk about you the whole time, but my personal thing is um, 
I'm a recovered alcoholic and drug addict. So I was, I was deep into that whole process when I was a young person and I got sober when I was 22. So now I'm 55. Hi over there. So I'm, I'm uh, 55 now and I've been sober for 33 years and uh, cannabis was part of my uh, party signature back in the day. I, I you know, woke up and uh, medicated, I found ways through using cannabis and alcohol and a variety of other stimulants to cope with my day. Well, and you know, that's actually I, a physician that I worked with um, at a chronic pain clinic a couple of years ago, they're an, an addiction specialist. And a lot of their patients, when they were trying to lower their dose on their opioids, would turn to cannabis and cannabinoid therapy because it, it is a part of that solution. Yeah. And part of my enthusiasm about cannabis in general, I deal with a lot of guys in recovery mm-hmm. that are trying to get their lives together. And for many of us, it's abstinence. But for a lot of people in the opiate world, there, it is such a, a narrow path to get off of opiates that... Uh, oh, I, I fully agree. I've seen it. Cannabis offers an opportunity for people to have the kind of uh, coping mechanism chemically that's going to help them get through the abyss of heroin addiction. It's... Um, it's just, uh, it's a devastating epidemic here in the States. I'm certain you have the same issues in Canada, and uh, it's one of the biggest things that we're going to uh, face. But your show, going back to this, um, is on Mondays at 4.20 p.m. on Sirius XM Radio Station 168 with Todd Shapiro. Yeah, yeah that are, is it. Are you having fun with the show? Yeah, it's um, it's exciting. It's 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 a really great experience. I truly never expected to be in this position at all. Yeah. So I'm just very thankful for the opportunities and just the incredible people that I've been able to meet that are on the show as well. It's been very nice and refreshing. Well, and if you would have told me that I'd be uh, doing an interview with you on Skype in the cannabis business on behalf of Bovida, I would shake my head and wonder because I had no expectation that I would be doing this at this stage of my career either. So I go to trade show, shows on behalf of Bovida, and I'm the guy that stands out in the aisle and people walk by and I say, fresh weed. <laughs> and they look at me and they go, do you have fresh weed? And I'm like, no, I don't have fresh weed. But if you have dry buds that you want to keep yummy, you need to, put, you need to put them in a jar or a bag with our Bovida packs. So, so that's how we met is I was doing my, you know, carnival barker routine out in the deal and you walked by and we engaged in conversation. So I'm grateful that we made that connection. I want to know about, uh, team MD. Tell me what team MD is. I know that's a part of your life. Yeah. So team MD, we're, we're still a startup, not going to lie. Um, and where it's a company that's been founded by my partner and myself. She is a, she's been a registered nurse for over 30 years and she's been educating patients, specifically chronic pain patients for over 10 years. Um, she's also my mother, hence why it's called team MD, team mother, daughter. Um, and we are, (laughs) it's pretty cheesy. Um, and we, we are actually like an extension or a team of the medical doctor. So essentially what our goals are, are to um, hook up with, with physicians who have a practice who are maybe like on the verge of willing to prescribe cannabis. Because a lot of the issues that we're facing right now in Canada is the college is cracking down on physicians or they're being ridiculously strict on them who are prescribing cannabis. And the way that our billing systems work here is it's incredibly like you have to see a certain amount of patients per day so that you can sustain your practice. So we want to just save the physician's time and become a part of their team so where the patients are getting the proper education they need because this is a type of medicine that needs a lifestyle. It needs a multimodal approach on so many levels. And the physician can't always sit with the patient for an hour and go over all these things with them. They need an extension of themselves. So that's where we come in and we help facilitate that education, make sure the patient's needs are being met properly, and just make sure that the physician is able to focus on what it is that they're truly good at, and that's practicing medicine and prescribing and diagnosing and all those great things. 
I just had an inspiration listening to my goal. Let's set a goal. Let's do this live. Uh, well, okay. it's not really, it's pre recorded, but let's do this right now. Okay, so the goal, okay. and see if you can get your whole being around this idea. This is a whopper. Okay. I see Melissa Ralston doing a TED Talk, seven or eight minutes of concise, uh, spirited discourse about something in this industry, the help, well, how to help people, how to find relief and how to do it responsibly and effectively and in a healthy way mm -hmm. in a TED Talk, standing, holding center and having this conversation, you know, standing ovation, that kind of thing. I see that happening in, I see that happening in the next two years. So it is August of 2017. So by August of 2019, I see you doing a TED Talk. So how do you feel about that? It's funny that you mentioned that because about a year ago, my uh, one of my good friends, his name's Mark Pelly. He's very heavy, heavily involved in the in the music industry. He, we, him, and I were sitting on my couch just catching up um, about a year ago, and he said, "You know what? I see you doing a TED Talk. So you're the second person that said it." Um, and so I, have, I haven't had any. Happen now. I haven't had any contact with him, so. No, you don't even know who he is. So the universe <laughs> is telling you from different mouthpieces that this is part of your future. That's pretty exciting. So uh, one of the things that I'm excited about in having uh, this relationship with you, between me personally, Drew Emmer and Melissa Rolston, and between our company Bovida, supporting what you do. You're mm -hmm. a tr you're a tremendous advocate. You're a great spokesperson. You're a, a heart driven woman, which is um, uh, really important to us because we're a heart driven company. And um, I see so much good. I have so much hope and optimism in a world that seems to be spiraling out of control with negativity and uh, oh despondency. Yeah. I, I'm hopeful. I'm a stand for what's possible. And I'm going to consistently encourage you to dream bigger dreams because I see what you're capable of doing and being and manifesting in your life, Melissa, and it's fabulous. Now, to that point, I want to talk about Forbes magazine. <laughs> okay, come on. Do you, do you have relatives at Forbes, Forbes magazine? No. No? No. I, you know, you brought up the universe, so I kind of want to talk about it. Go ahead. Um, so my friend who you saw just walk in the back there, we kind of like have our own little incubator where we'll like study and do work together. So that's why she's here. Her name's Sarah. She's absolutely incredible. Um, she's very heavily involved in the healthcare field as well. Um, but I, I, we went out for her birthday and we hadn't seen each other in years because she's been traveling this and that. And we've known one another for over 10 years. And uh, after her birthday... We, we went out and, um, like we, we went and grabbed food and I'm a vegetarian and in Canada, a popular dish is a poutine, which is French fries, cheese curds and gravy. So I ordered a vegetarian poutine, but they did not put vegetarian gravy on it. They put beef gravy on it. And I was so sick the next day. And that happened to be, um, the, the day before new year's. So I was so sick, feeling like absolute crap, didn't even really go out for New Year's, just went to my girlfriend's house, said Happy New Year, went home, went to bed. I woke up the next day, and I sat out of bed, and I was like, I want to be Forbes 30, 30 under 30. And it was like weird. It was one of those moments where I'm like, did something just like take over my body? Like, what's happening? And then fast forward to February, I meet Siobhan Lindley, CEO of Women Evolution, who is a contributor to, for Forbes. And we're in the same, one of the same entrepreneurial groups on Facebook. And um, she reached out to me and she's like, hey, like, I think you'd be perfect for this. And I was like, are you sure? She's like, yeah. So we scheduled a preliminary interview. And um, I, I actually shared my interview time with um, the woman, Antoinette Gomez, who I, I co-run the, the market Women Grow With. And um, she was just asking about our different stories and we each had, like, I split the hour interview into half an hour. We each had our time. And then afterwards, Siobhan's like, you guys have great stories. Melissa, I want to run your story. Let's plan the interview. So we actually did that interview in March, believe it or not. So I was still 24 at the time. And I was 25 when it was released. But it was, it was the first interview I'd ever done in my life. 
I'd never done it. Fantastic. So it, it, it was such a great experience. And she's an incredible woman. Like what she's doing to just get not like women to just own their purpose and their truth is phenomenal. Beautiful. So congratulations on that. Um, Thank you. I, 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 I just, I am so impressed with that, that that happened, that you created that in your life and that you followed through, that you stepped up and executed because so many people are presented with all these uh, doors and windows in life that, mm-hmm. op- that open sometimes for moments, sometimes for weeks and months, and they don't take advantage of those opportunities. Uh, fear or whatever their trip is causes them mm-hmm. to repel and not engage you're stepping into these things and it is opening more and more opportunities for the future. So congratulations on that. Where can our viewers and listeners at home find your Forbes interview? Um, well, so it's on, it's in the link in my bio on my Instagram and it's also pinned on my Twitter as well. So what's your Instagram? Oh, uh, Mel.RollingStone and my Twitter is just Mel Rolling Stone. I can't wait to see what's next for you. Thank you. I do have some things in the works right now. It's just pretty exciting. Do you have anything else you want to tease besides the Todd Shapiro show on Sirius XM Radio 168 Mondays at 4.20 p.m.? The Cannabis Report? (laughs) No, that's that's about it. uh, Let the the bombs drop as they come. So, Drew, what's your... What's your favorite part about going to a trade show? I'm a people person. I don't know if you've noticed this, but I enjoy people. And I like the notion of uh, reaching people in the aisles and getting them into the booth to talk about themselves primarily. And hopefully to get a chance to tell them a little bit about what Bovida might be able to do to help them. We have fun. I'll tell you, that's the thing about our trade shows. We insist on having a good time. Everybody is so serious in life, and we try to remind people that we're in the cannabis business. To have fun and make money. It's about having fun and making money, and we're helping people. Exactly. What could be better? We have the most fun job of almost anybody at a trade show. We're not in the cannabis business per se because we're not buying and selling cannabis. We're selling something that helps keep it nice. You know, we keep it perfect, but... uh, We're a small part, but... We're a small but necessary part. Exactly. And we know what we're doing. And we do, and it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's so much fun. Days get long sometimes. My feet do hurt oh after my God, my feet a hurt. full eight-hour day standing. Yeah. Eight? We usually go ten, don't we? Seems like ten. Well, I usually take a two-hour break. Oh, you do have that lunch break. <laughs> yeah, I'm usually in the booth. So if you need me, find me in the booth. Scott, he'll be at lunch. Drew, what are, what are you kind of most known for at a trade show? What do people... Oh, oh fresh weed. Uh, yeah. So... And, and no offense to the cannabis uh, purists out there. Uh, we always used to, in the old days, back when I was a child, refer a little child referring to cannabis as weed. Um, some people don't say that anymore, but I tend to stand out in the aisle and say, fresh weed, and people stop and react. It, re- it draws people in. Well, it causes them to go, what are you going to do, give me some fresh weed? And it's like, no, I don't have any <laughs> fresh weed. I have the freshness for your weed to make your weed fresh yeah and then they go oh and then do you want some? and then we get talking and it just everything warms up from there that's a really great segue here um we're gonna do a little section of the show which we call hashtag ask bovida um where we take questions that we received from social media that's like instagram and yeah. facebook yeah and also okay. snapchat yeah. is thank you um so i'm gonna just read a couple of you guys and i would just love to know these are questions that you guys get all the time at trade shows and that we get all the time on social media. Um, so it shouldn't really be any curveballs. The first one, what's the best way to rejuvenate some dried out cannabis? Ding. Put bovida in it. How does that work? How does well, that if really- you take a bovida pack, I mean, everybody has dry cannabis. Everybody has dry weed. Nobody likes dry weed. But uh, people walk up to us at the shows, and if you're in a state where it's legal to have it in your possession, obviously, um, they'll open it up and show it to us, and it's like, ooh, Ooh. dry weed. Mm. So we put the bovita four gram in there, and within sometimes minutes or within hours, it's starting to 
resume its color and flavor and aroma and sponginess and people just go crazy because it's like how i'll have people come the next day we've had plenty that, i was just gonna say that people come back the next day and it's like oh you, you like me like day two of the show yeah, yeah i was in vancouver well we were in vancouver obviously um and a guy just wasn't buying it and our simplest answer is try it we're not going to sell you on it yeah don't take our word for just it. just take the you product test it yourself test it out come back tomorrow and let us know. And he's like, oh, whatever. So I see him walking the next day in the show, and he's like, dude, you were so right. My flower is way better. And that was 24 hours or less. Yeah. And that's it, not and the it, only time Literally that's overnight you can change, yeah. you know, what the it looks like, what it smells like, what it tastes like. It's really a, it's a lifesaver. If you're into cannabis... Why aren't you, How do you keeping it Real fresh? quick, so you put bovid in with your cannabis, does the container or the bag matter that you, that no. you keep it in? If there's a reasonable uh, seal, you're in good shape. You put it in, you could put it in a bowl with a loose cover on it, <laughs> and it would be better off tomorrow. Just because bovida reacts to the environment that it's in. Bovida controls the environment that it's in. Mm -hmm. It will, it, it, it's almost like it has a brain, but it doesn't. It just reacts and brings the environment up to 62% humidity or down to, if it's a wet environment, it'll bring it down. And it's foolproof. That's the coolest thing about this. This is the reason why I got so excited about the company. I was bummed out about having to always fix my humidor and I found Bovida and I don't have to worry about it. No mess, no worries. There's no maintenance. Enjoy. And Perfect. You, you nailed it. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna right I'm gonna cut back. right to question two. This is <laughs> yeah, we're go just ahead. gonna do two questions. So the second one is, um, why does it matter if my cannabis is dry? So like people on social media ask all the time. They're like, what are you losing when your cannabis gets dried out? You're losing the medicinal value if it's medical marijuana, the the potency of it, um, just the overall quality. The the smoke of it's gonna be a lot harsher if it's dry. You're gonna burn your throat. Um, just the, the smell, the aroma, the everything, the overall quality diminishes as it gets dry. It's kind of like milk. You buy milk and it comes in a, in the fridge, it's refrigerated. You bring it home and put it in the fridge because that's how you have good quality milk and it stays fresh. You're not going to leave your milk out on the counter and let it get all chunky. I like listening to you, to you say the word milk. Milk. <laughs> Mount. It's very Minnesotan. So okay. It's, okay. So yes, I am from Minnesota. No, that's such a Once, Minnesotan. Okay. After you go, after you say what you're going to say, I'm going to throw a curveball at you. But go ahead. I forgot what I was going to say. Okay, I'm hitting you with a curveball then. Bring it. <laughs> um, the old wrinkle ball. People say, people say I like my cannabis dry because I grind it up, and when it's drier, it smell it smells more powerful. I I like it dry. I don't want it where you guys say to put it at 62% or 58%, whatever. I like it dry. Okay. That's what I say. Okay. You can have your own preference, and if 62 and 58 doesn't work for you, that's fine, but you just have to be aware that, like I said, you're losing medicinal potency. And everybody sells by weight. This is the other thing in this industry. If you had a pound and you had it out in ambient air, you're out in Vegas or you're out in Scottsdale or you're in Central California and you just have it exposed to the air, you're losing 5 to 7% of the gross weight of the product mm. over the course of two or three hours. So dollars. It's ridiculous the amount of money you lose just to evaporation. So if you're on the well, seller's the thing end. about the smell part of it, because it, it, it smells so much when it's dry because all those terpenes are falling off and you're losing them. They're yeah, gone. They're in the head gas. They're you actually open. coming at you in the air. Yeah, yeah they're in the head gas. That, okay. Yeah, so you open the bag. And this is a tradition in the cannabis industry. You open the bag and you smell it and you go, oh, wow. Man, that's really great smelling cannabis. And the reality is that's the goodness of the flower coming out. It'll never be the same. What people forget is this product is dead. It was cut down. It was put on a rack to dry. It came off the rack. It's been degrading every step along the way. And it's at a certain level of, of uh, rot that causes it to smell. 
the way it smells. And that really pungent, crazy good odor is something that's temporary and it's going to continue to degrade and to go away. So what Bovida does is it doesn't mitigate the loss of that smell altogether. It slows it down. It broadens the window that you can have to enjoy that product in your in, at its peak uh, quality. That's just a it's a gift. I mean, people look at it and they go, man, I put all that blood, sweat, and tears into growing this great bud, and then it just goes off a ski jump. It kind of goes back to that good, better, best uh, saying that I learned a long time ago. Um, you know, don't rest until good is better and better is best. I mean, that's an old motto for people that work out and do sports. But the reality is you can improve your situation. You can take what you have and make it better. You can preserve the goodness and it's really inexpensive to do so. So why wouldn't you at least try? And we don't tell people, hey, we know everything about your business. We just do one thing really well, and we want you to try it. You decide. Just check it out, and you decide. And without fail, people try, and they go, yeah, you guys were right. Yeah. How about this? How about you have Drew say, thanks for tuning in to Cultivate, because he's got... <clears throat> the radio voice and I can uh you have a radio voice. Sure, and then you can hit you can hit the other part of it. Yeah. Sure. I have a radio face. We want to thank you for tuning in to Cultivate. If you're looking to watch more episodes, feel free to go to our social media on either Facebook, Instagram, YouTube at Bovida Cannabis. At Bovida Cannabis. At Bovida Cannabis. At Bovida Cannabis. Bovida Cannabis. Bovida Cannabis. Bovida at Cannabis. Bovida Cannabis. At. At. At sign. Bovida. Capital Bovida B. Cannabis. Bovida Cannabis. Cannabis. Not to be redundant.